entry into my long delayed schlock cinema series. This is entry number three. And this time we're gonna be taking a look at a movie from Denmark called Reptilicus. Now I actually picked this up uh, just recently. Uh, MGM and Timeless Media Group have issued these four packs. They're called uh, Sci-Fi Classics. This is our Movies For You Sci-Fi Classics. And this one includes Reptilicus right there. Reptilicus has actually been out of print for a while, so it's actually cool that you can pick it up for five bucks and you get three other movies, including uh, The Amazing Transparent Man, The Neanderthal Man, and The Brain That Wouldn't Die, which I actually already have another copy of anyway. But uh, Reptilicus is actually kind of an interesting film because it was created as a dual Denmark um, or Danish-American production in the early 1960s. The Danish version, I believe, was released in 1961, and the American version was released in 1962. And um, it's sort of a case where the, the Danish version was made and released, and it included some extra scenes and more of a romantic plot, I guess. The American version took a lot of scenes from the Danish version, overdubbed them in English, and then more scenes were shot with actually a few different actors, I guess, but most of the same cast, and it was released in the United States minus a few scenes and minus the romantic plot. Um, the film in and of itself isn't horrible. By no means is it a great film. The reason I'm including it into my schlock cinema series is because of three main things. One is the incredibly, the incredibly bad special effects. Uh, they are terrible, and I'll get to those in a moment. Um, there's also an incredible overuse of stock footage in this movie. Uh, I would have to say that stock footage probably makes up about 50% of this movie, and this movie runs an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, it gets really dull really quick. And of course, there's the ever-present poor acting, which actually isn't as bad uh, as you might think from a movie of this type, but it's still bad. Uh, the plot, such as it is, involves a mining. They're mining for copper. Uh, this mining expedition, they drill into what appears to be fresh flesh, and a paleontologist tells them that they've actually discovered the once frozen remains of some unknown reptile. They bring these remains back to a Danish aquarium, and events transpire, and this frozen uh, tail section, I guess you would call it, thaws out. And it turns out it has these regenerative, 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 I don't know. It has the ability to regenerate, like a lizard can grow back its tail, or a starfish can grow uh, a new limb, that kind of thing. Uh, this thing can regenerate its entire body from this little tail section. And that's exactly what happens, is this little tail section thaws out, turns into a giant monster, which is dubbed Reptilicus by a reporter. The monster is animated by the incredibly super high-tech process of puppetry. So for the all of the scenes involving Reptilicus, we get to see what amounts to a marionette sloppily bumping into what look like HO scale model train sets. Um, <laughs> and the monster looks drunk half the time because he can't go in one straight line. He just sort of bobs back and forth. And then that is intercut with the stock footage of the Danish military doing things like launching depth charges or uh, setting up howitzers or driving tanks or jeeps or whatever. There are a few scenes where the actors actually appear with some of the military hardware, uh, but it's nowhere near the amount or scale of the stuff that you see in the stock footage. Uh, one of the actors, his name is Carl Ottison, he does an incredibly good American accent. He actually looks the part of an American. He barks orders like an American military man would. He is a Danish actor. But I still can't figure out why an, one single American is brought in to run, essentially, the Danish military uh, by screaming and barking orders at them in, you know, typically American fashion. Uh, apparently the Danish military is totally inexperienced in handling... 
um, large reptilian creatures and the American military has some experience at that. I'm not really sure. Uh, the stock footage is also used to give us a virtual tour of Copenhagen and literally for about five minutes we are shown the sights of Copenhagen. We get to see the bridges and the Little Mermaid uh, statue from Hans Christian Andersen and the, the port and all sorts of stuff. I guess it's a port, I'm not sure. Um, I kind of zoned out. And then there's a musical number where a, I think she's a Danish pop star, sings a song called Tivoli Lights Very Poorly. <laughs> uh, and honestly, this movie is a movie that I have fond memory of, memories of from my childhood. I really enjoyed it when I was little, but even as a little kid, I knew the special effects were terrible. I did not, however, know that the acid breath of Reptilicus was added in later. It wasn't even included in the Danish version, but it was kind of added as sort of an upgrade to make Reptilicus seem more uh, threatening, I guess. The scenes involving the acid spitting look terrible because this stuff is neon green and it looks like it was uh, added in uh, cartoon style, like it's animated. Uh, it's just very bad. This is a very bad movie. Uh, in terms of execution, I guess. It's really unfair, I would think, to kind of criticize it for what it is. It's supposed to be a B-movie. It knows it's a B-movie. It's just not a very good B-movie. But if you've got a, a small child or a kid that you want to introduce to giant monster movies, there's really nothing objectionable in this movie, really, uh, aside from some gore at the beginning when they find the creature's uh, tail bits. Uh, the drill that goes into the tail. There's some blood and stuff on the guy's hands. But other than that, um, there's really nothing objectionable to uh, or about this movie other than the bad acting, the bad special effects, and the rather simplistic plot um, and some of the dialogue. One of my favorite lines of dialogue in this film is, you will have to shoot at it point blank from close range. Okay. Uh, if I had to rate this film, I, I would probably have to give it a 2 out of 10. Uh, it is enjoyable as a Laugh Riot uh, viewing experience, which would probably be really improved by copious amounts of alcohol, but even as a B-movie, it's not that great. Um, but it's still worth seeing if you like schlocky films. So as a schlocky film, it's definitely worth seeing, but if you're looking for quality entertainment, you may want to look elsewhere. Uh, but that is my review of Reptilicus. Again, you could pick it up along with three other films for five bucks on DVD. I got this from Amazon.com, and uh, it is out now. There's also another collection uh, that is available right now, and it is including The Man from Planet X, Beyond the Time Barrier, The Time Travelers, and The Angry Red Planet, also available for five bucks. So check those out if you can. Uh, so there you go. Thanks again for watching. As always, feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And sorry it's taken so long to put another entry into my schlock cinema series. Take it easy.